Cousin Armand Talley is back again on my show. I'm so honored and pleased to have him back on. Armand, how are you doing, man? Hey, k Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. You got, you really rock, man. I mean, with all the work and your... Uh, you're doing on the side now you you know you've prepared a super tutorial let's say basic tutorial for uh, the average user for the noobs for anybody out there who wants to yeah wants to run a lightning a fully self-sovereign lightning node so Armand why don't you just you know in your own words why why should people run their own full node and their own self-sovereign lightning node. What is it? Why Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? Thank you yes. so much. So, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me, Kayvon. So we'll go through the slides, but just to give a, a quick run through. So this is something that you have the chance to do. Otherwise, I mean, there are some uh, like mobile wallets that are like fully uh, non-custodial. You can use them, but personally, like I prefer to, to use my own lightning node, which is fully non-custodial. And I mean, if you want to contribute to the to, to the second layer network, if you want to provide some liquidity, it's be better to do it with your own node. Then you can manage your channels, manage the fees, the routing fees and all those stuff. And of course, by doing it, you, you truly understand it. And uh, that's why you need to have a lightning full node to, to be able to do it and understand it, how, how it, how it goes and understand the basic terminology and all this stuff. And, and you can, on top of that, earn some routing fees, depending, I mean, we're going to go through it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much like why you should run a lightning node, but yeah, maybe we can start the presentation. I, I actually have a slide which explains why you should run a lightning node in different points. So let me, I share my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, crystal clear. Okay, great. So, the agenda, the points that we're going to go through, first, we will take a look at the, the hardware specification recommendation. I mean, what kind of hardware uh, is the best suited for running the node? Uh, and of course, if you're running your full, uh, full uh, Bitcoin node, I mean, you can run on top of it, but we will come up with the best recommendation that's out there. Then I slightly go, going through the, how to set up the, the lighting node. Then I will describe the terminology like the basic terminology of uh, what, when you run a node, like what is inbound, outbound, local, remote capacity, and all this stuff. Then we'll show how to open a channel and creating a liquidity swap using a platform called Lightning Network Plus. Then we'll explain what is rebalancing and how to do rebalancing, but that's a huge topic on its own. We'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just touch it slightly. Routing fees, what's a routing fees, and how to change routing fees, watch, oh, and then watchtowers, what are the watchtowers, and how to actually implement them on your own node. Uh, one of my favorite features is the, the Telegram API using the, the Balance of Satoshi's uh, app, which is developed by uh, Alex Bosworth. We will cover that one as well. And last but not least, we'll show the, the loop services, which you can gain inbound and outbound liquidity on your channels. So, yeah, before that, I mean, I already mentioned why you should run a Lightning node. So you will have access to the Lightning network in full non-custodial way by running your own node. And as I said, you will truly understand how it works once you, you get your hands a bit dirty and you work with it and you see it in action, it's quite satisfying, to be honest. Uh, and of course, you can basically, if you provide some liquidity on the second layer, uh, you, you are basically contributing and supporting the, 
uh, the Lightning Network, the second layer network. And the famous aspect of it, I mean, don't trust verify, which is famous among the, the Bitcoiners. Uh, I mean, as I said, there are non-custodial uh, mobile wallets, but again, for running the full node, if you like, if you're gonna make swaps with other plebs like you, you are totally having a higher uh, degree of uh, privacy. And on top of that, depending on how you, you create your channels, how you define the, the uh, routing fees, uh, you can earn some routing, route, routing fee on, uh, on the routings that are going through your node, basically. We'll go through them, but just uh, here, is the, the main, uh, here are the main points that basically shows why, why you should run a lighting node. You don't have to, but if you, you, you want, you can easily do so. Uh, regarding the hard, hardware specs, so of course you need a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. The eight gigabyte RAM is recommended. That's very important, even though you can use four gigabyte RAM, but uh, that will somehow not allow you to, to run all the, the application uh, on your node all simultaneously because your RAM will get overloaded. So just if you don't, don't have the hardware yet, just go ahead ordering the eight gigabyte RAM. And SSD at least one terabyte, one terabyte plus, you can still run with hard disk drive, HDD, but it will affect your, uh, the operation uh, speed as well as the initial blockchain download speed. Even though like if you're running my node, uh, you can activate the quick sync, which is somehow uh, basically downloads the initial, uh, basically it will speed up the, the blockchain synchronization. But if you want to start from scratch, if you go with hard drive, it will take you at least two months to synchronize the whole blockchain. So yeah, it's recommended to take uh, to have an SSD at least one terabyte. If you can just go with two terabyte, it will be much better for future. Micro SD card at least 16 gigabytes. And uh, regarding the power supply, make sure to use the, the original Raspberry Pi power supply because otherwise there, there, there has been a lot of cases that people have been basically experiencing the, the voltage outage. And that was mainly because of the, the power supply. So make sure you read the specs of your power supply. It has to be uh, like it is mentioned here. And your cooling system is also very important. So make sure you, you get a case which has a really good cooling system. I know that the, the original Raspberry Pi cooling case is not the best one. The cooling system is uh, not really good. If you can afford the, basically the cases with the cooling fans and with the proper fins, heat sinks on your CPU and RAM, that will help a lot because otherwise, if, you're, if the, the, the heat, basically if the, the temperature of your CPU exceeds around 80 degrees, your CPU will throttle and then basically it might crash. Then you have to restart your Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and um, Armand, let me just add from my own experience, maybe it's useful for the you know potential listener out there. Um, I, write, I finally found out it, it, I do not have the original Raspberry Pi power supply for my Raspberry 4. So I just ordered it, the original part, because, um, you know, I have this, uh, the Casa 2 setup and that was, you know, Raspberry 4 with the SSD, but because it was sort of a, you know, pre-packaged thing, they didn't like deliver or, or it didn't come with the original uh, the power supply. So, and because of that, I didn't not only have under voltage, but also uh, co-responsible for that, you know, the, the mm. CPU throttling. So, okay. so I think it plays into one another. Uh, so as soon as I get back home, I'm going to, you know, replace the power supply and hopefully, um, I mean, I also, you know, did improvise and put up a cooling tower on top of it with the cooling pads and the cooling glue, you know, so maybe you can do your own research, uh, the potential use out there. Um, but it's really important that you keep your temperature. Um, uh, I heard, you know, um, it would be preferable if, if it, it was something like maximum between 30 and 40, you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that's. Yes, because it affects your speed. And yeah, you can easily monitor it. 
uh, like while you're using the app, especially like once you, you, you run your lightning node, uh, it will engage the CPU a lot. And if you don't have a proper cooling system, it can easily exceed the 80 degrees. Uh, so yeah, that's about the hardware. Yeah, as I said earlier, you can run a four gigabyte RAM, but you might uh, face some difficulties. But it, in case you already have a four gigabyte RAM, there is a feature in my node. So I'm a user of my node. And uh, I mean, there are some stuff that are pretty common. I mean, it's the, exactly the same in Umbrel, but you might see some screenshots which are uh, basically uh, my node specific. And for the my node users, if you're using four gigabyte, gigabyte RAM, if you go in, in your settings under advanced and under swap dropdown, there is a dropdown which is called swap. The default is two gigabytes and you can raise it to four gigabytes, especially if you have a hard drive or SSD of at least one terabyte, you need to have basically some space on your hard drive and it will somehow utilize your hard drive and uh, it avoids overloading of your RAM. It will help you a bit, but it's better to just go with the eight gigabyte RAM on, uh, for your Raspberry Pi. So then setting up the Lightning node itself, I mean, I just uh, imagine you already have set up your hardware. So this is just the software aspect of it. And it's my node, as I said, I'm a my node user. I, I believe the Umbrel users, it's much easier than my node. Uh, but yeah, just for setting up, you click on the Lightning Wallet on the main page and it, it will uh, show you uh, an option of creating the wallet. And then it will show you the seed phrases. This is important to, to take, uh, basically write down all the, the, the seed words, the seed phrase, put it in somewhere safe. But it's important to mention these seed phrases uh, is only for recovering your on-chain wallet on your Lightning Note. I will cover the the backup for your lightning channels later on, because in case if something goes wrong with your node and you already have some open channels, your seed phrase is not gonna uh, recover your funds on your lightning channels. Your seed phrase only recovers your unchained wallet on your lightning node. You need your static channel backup, which we will go through further on how to take the backup, uh, how to, to have it on regular basis. Uh, but yeah, this is important. This is part of the, the recovery for the recovery of your lightning node. You need to have this seed phrase. So write it down, keep it somewhere safe, like your other seeds in another country, in different locations. Uh, and then, yeah, then it will ask you to re-enter your seed, basically to make sure you have typed it correctly. And yeah, then your lightning node is running. That's the, the page you will see. And uh, yes, then once you have that running, you can use uh, two of the, the, the interfaces that are already included in my note. These applications, right? The Lightning RTL and Thunderhub. Thunderhub is for the pro user. So basically if you have the, the license of my note, otherwise if you have the basic plan, you only have access to RTL. I mean, of course you can communicate with your, with your node using the, uh, the terminal of your node. I mean, you have to use all the commands, but these are the applications, the user interface that you, you're gonna communicate easily with your node and do all this stuff that we're gonna, uh, we're gonna show you further on. As for mobile apps, you can pair your mobile app with your node. Uh, so there is a section in your Lightning node uh, that basically you click on pair wallet and then from the drop down you choose which wallet you want to pair with. So Zeus is my favorite and then because of the fact that you have a lot of options that basically you have pretty much most of the options that you can control on your mobile app, the same option, the, the same stuff that you can control on, on your PC. I mean, on the, the RTL or Thunderhub. So you have manual on-chain fee input for opening the channels or sending transactions. Uh, you, you can even manage the, the fee of your channels on the go from the mobile app, as well as you can manage your UTXOs on, of, of your basically on-chain wallet. Zap is somewhere in middle for me because uh, you can still open and close channels, but you cannot manually uh, put in the, the fee that you want to, uh, that you want to, to pay for the on-chain transaction. 
or you cannot, for example, you cannot manage the fee of the channels on the, the fo- uh, on the app. Maybe they will they will come up with the the, the new updates that will give you uh, b- basically more features on the app. And Blue Wallet is my least favorite because it is only basically if you pair it with your Blue Wallet, you cannot manage any channels. You can basically receive payments and then send if, uh, yeah, in that case. So you can basically do the, the receive and payment part of it, but you cannot really manage your node. Yeah, and uh, it's also my least favorite <laughs> wallet because um, I still have my, I have an Android, I have a super, you know, Android super smartphone and no name, you know, uh, from uh, uh, my two, but it's it's still Android, on the Android version eight or something, eight something. So you need at least a version nine upwards in order to install or update because I can I, I used to have blue wallet it used to work but now it, it doesn't because it's just only compatible with Android version you know 9 10 upwards something like that so just for the you know maybe yeah. information yeah. but I think I I've, I've seen it somewhere that they are coming up with new updates that will give you the full non-custodial management of your node. Mm-hmm. I think at this point, it, it is somehow uh, restricted to some users. Mm-hmm. Normal users don't have it. But I think at some point, they are coming with some uh, interesting updates. But okay. at this point of time, the on-chain wallet is really my favorite, blue wallet, like especially for like the, if you want to watch some of your wallets, you're watching the public keys, and it connects to your Electrum server as well. Uh, but when it comes to Lightning, uh, no, it is, uh, I don't like it at the moment. <laughs> So, yeah, that's about setting up the basic setup. And now we're going to uh, go ahead and basically fund our Lightning Wallet on-chain, on-chain uh, wallet, basically. So first, you need to fund your on-chain wallet on your Lightning node. And then once you have funded that, you can start uh, creating channels and uh, basically transfer those sets uh, on, on a Lightning a lightning network on second layer. So from RTL, it's easy. From the panel on the left, you have the, the section which is called Unchain. Click on it and you can generate SegWit or legacy address. Uh, yeah, you generate the address. It will show you the, the, the address as well as the QR code. You can just fund it. In Thunder Hub, pretty much the same. On your home screen, you have uh, two sections, Lightning and Bitcoin. Click on receive, just choose what kind of address you want and then fund it. And before moving forward, I'm going to go through the the terminology that are mainly used uh, in the community. And these are the stuff that you need to understand first then in order to be able to basically start uh, playing around with your your lightning node and start uh, creating channels. So here I'm showing one channel that I have opened. And you see uh, you see there are 2,000 Satoshis. This is known, uh, sorry, 2 million Satoshis. This is the total capacity of the channel. And you can see that the, all of those funds are at the, the left-hand side, which are shown as a blue bar. And this means, let's say left-hand side is my side. I have opened the channels. This is the ca- capacity that I am able to send. And that is known as local balance, or you can call it outbound liquidity. So this is the liquidity that I am able to spend. I am able to send. And on the other side, which I don't have any capacity, that is the capacity that I'm able to to receive. That is called remote balance or inbound liquidity, how much liquidity can can come inside my channel. But at this point of time, I cannot have any, I I cannot receive any sets on my channel. I don't have any capacity on that channel. So in order to to have some capacity on on that channel, I mean, there are different ways that we'll go through it later on. But let's say in this case, I make a payment. I send I use my channel, I buy something from uh, using Lightning Network, I pay 1 million Satoshis using that channel. And now, as you can see, my channel is somehow balanced. So 1 million Satoshi is deducted from my side, from my local or outbound liquidity, 
but I have opened the same amount on my remote or inbound liquidity. So now I can start receiving payments up to 1 million Satoshis using that channel. And if I send another 1 million Satoshis, uh, so I will use all of my funds on, on my side, but this is just for simplicity. If you open 2 million Satoshis channel, you won't be able to use all of those funds because a bit of that is going to be reserved as a commit fee in case of closing the channel. Uh, just uh, like you might be able to spend 1,998,000 Satoshis, something around that. Uh, and your yeah, vice versa, if someone opens a channel with you or if, uh, if you start receiving payments from that channel, uh, basically you see that the... Uh, your local balance or outbound liquidity will increase and your remote balance will shrink. Uh, before showing how to open a channel, I will just go through some of the tips that, I mean, not tips, some of the maybe recommendations and uh, yeah, some, some hints. I am personally not a fan of uh, making channels with the big merchants. Uh, I mean, in case if you want to just use it as a payment, of course, you can just open one channel, one big channel with, I don't know, with Bitrefill or Wallet of Satoshi. Uh, and yeah, do make your payments. But when you look at the big picture, these merchant notes, they already, they, they already have a lot of liquidity and a lot of channels on their side. And if you think about it in a big picture, if everyone is just opening channel with them, there is this ethos of decentralization in the community. Of course, the miners are keeping the whole network decentralized. And I, I believe plebs, the people who are running, running nodes, running lightning nodes, it's their responsibility to somehow keep it decentralized. And that is only possible by making routes and making channels among each other. And at some point, you just need one route to, to one of these big merchants. But if all the nodes keep opening channels with all the big merchants, it's going to get somehow centralized. So that's where we get to, like, I'm saying find plebs nodes with a high quality, which like they have high capacity and more channels with the similar nodes. And then you might ask, okay, how to find, how to find a, a good node? That is not a simple question to, to, to answer. But uh, you can use different platforms like oneml.com or ambush.space. You can see the, the information of the nodes, how much capacity they have, what's the public address, how, much channels, how many channels they have. But uh, I personally use one of the, uh, I, I think these days it's really well known, Lightning Network Plus platform. I don't really bother like searching for, for nodes. I try to find out swaps that are really good, or I try to open my own swap and then ask other nodes to join, to join in. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm the users. I will show you how it looks like. So Lightning Network Plus uh, is like a platform that is basically just for communicating among the nodes and finding each other and uh, basically agreeing with, with each other to create channels and then create a swap together. I will show you the platform uh, shortly, uh, but before that, let me fi finalize the tips. At the moment, somehow the minimum channel size is recommended somewhere around 1 million Satoshis, especially if you want to have, uh, if you want to earn some routing fees, but over time this might, I mean, let's see, it might uh, reduce it depending on how much uh, liquidity is on the network, uh, but you shouldn't really open a very, very small channel because your commit fee will increase if the, the mempool gets crowded and then you cannot use the channel. Uh, yeah, but 1 million Satoshi at the moment is somewhere that is uh, somehow recommended at least. And be patient. Do not pay uh, high on-chain fees when you want to open the channels. Just do it when, uh, during the time that the mempool uh, it's not really crowded. So I personally, I think I, I haven't paid uh, more than one Satoshi per value byte for opening my channels, at least for like 95% of my channels. I'm being patient because you don't want to waste those ads for opening channels. Uh, 
Yeah, and maybe one warning, uh, because from my own experience, do not force close a channel because it's going to cost you a lot of sats, a lot of sats, lots of sats. Yes. So uh, just be patient again, you know, just um, I think I, didn't, I don't know what's the procedure. Maybe you can explain that. Like, how do you if you want to close, like, do you have like to notify the other person and, you know, the other person needs to the other on the other end of the channel needs to confirm or just oh, I don't know. Well, if uh, on top of that, as you said, if you force close it, your fund also gets locked for a uh, duration of time, which is it can be uh, up to two weeks, depending on how long is the lock time that is defined by the other node. So you, you, you can end up like not having access to your fund for up, uh, up to two weeks. But uh, if both of the nodes are online, uh, you don't have to do much. I mean, you just uh, close the channel and then the other node uh, will confirm it. And then uh, it should be back in on your on-chain wallet as soon as the the on-chain transaction is confirmed depending how much you yeah but in the in your case was the other node offline when you first closed it i think so <laughs> i think it was even with with btc sessions it was just i don't know I, I was just trying to learn and you know test it out and i just i didn't think you know i didn't really you know do my own homework before that so i just force closed it i just wanted to know what happens you know so yeah we were just naive and stupid but you know uh, i i notified you know in in a private dm uh btc sessions you know ben mm -hmm. and then you know but but that, you know at the end of the day you know it's not his fault because uh, um, the cost that 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 was sort of incurred on me for for force closing it, it was it was still a lot lots of lots of sets. I'm I'm not even sure how much it was, but yeah, I think and you don't want to waste that those sets. Yeah, <laughs> so stupid. But that's how you learn, you know. So yeah, I guess yeah. absolutely. So then, uh, yeah, let me show you the, the Lightning Network Plus, which where you can uh, create liquidity swaps, and what that means. That means you can easily receive inbound liquidity. So at first glance, you might say, okay, once you open a channel, that means you are only able to send payments depending uh, to who you open the channel to. Of course, if you just open it with a node which uh, who only has one channel with you, you can only make payments to, to that specific node. But in order to have inbound liquidity, you either, as I showed you earlier in the terminology section, you either have to uh, make a payment in order to gain some inbound liquidity on your channel, or you need to uh, use one of the services like loop or swap, but that will cost you some sats. You need to, uh, for example, I will show you how does loop work, uh, work later on, uh, or you, you can buy uh, inbound liquidity from, uh, for instance, Bitrefill. You will pay like 10, 10 US dollars or 12 US dollars, depending on how much capacity you want, and they will open a channel with you. Okay, which which procedure, Armin, is is the most, let's say, noob friendly or less, you know, less technical, or you have to, you know, maybe, uh, you know, put up with less, you know, headache. Uh, Lightning like Network Plus. Plus, that's yeah, what, yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. That's what we're going to show now. So this is a really, really great platform for all the players and uh, really easy to use. It might, in the, at first sight, it might seem a bit overwhelming, but once you get to it, you, you, you see that it is not that hard. And uh, also, I mean, privacy aspects, as I said, you don't want to have all your channels with the, with the big merchants. You want to have channels with uh, some nodes, uh, plebs nodes. And uh, basically, yeah, then your payments, uh, because if you have all your channels with the big merchant, again, like all your transactions uh, uh, can get recorded, something like that, you know, because if, but if your transaction goes through uh, a routing path, uh, only the, the node that r uh, routed that payment can see the inbound and outbound peer, you know, but uh yeah, that's why I'm, I'm mentioning the privacy aspects here. So you want to have uh, channels with uh, the, the high quality plebs nodes. So let me show you the, the Lightning Network Plus. So once you, 
you log into the, I mean, once you, you go into the website, you need to register for the first time and you just need to register with an email address and uh, yeah, create a password and you need to copy your lightning address, which you can find easily from your, uh, from your lightning node panel or from RTL Thunder Hub. You can find it in many different places. And then you just sign up. And then what you will see, you, you will see these swaps, uh, which can be triangle, a square or pentagon. What does it mean? So if you look at the picture, for example, this swap, there are two, uh, three nodes that basically they agree that they will open channels with each other. So A will, uh, will book a place at a position A and then B joins in and then C joins in. And then once everyone sits at their corresponding place, A opens a channel with, so here they, they agree that they open 1 million Satoshi channel with each other. A opens to B, B opens to C, C opens to A. So each node will have two channels at the same time. One channel is going out, giving him outbound liquidity. The other channel coming from the neighboring node, coming in, giving him inbound liquidity. And then uh, there is the comment section. You can co easily communicate with each other. Uh, you can, uh, for example, agree that everyone sets uh, set their fees to zero temporarily, and someone can do the the routing, uh, the the rebalancing. Uh, so basically, if let's say if you have opened the one million Satoshi channel uh, with node B and node C have created one channel coming towards you, you can rebalance the channel and you will receive five five hundred thousand Satoshis on both sides and both channels. And only one node has to do the rebalancing in order to uh, to do that. Or otherwise, like in some cases, you can just someone will volunteer to do the re rebalancing and then he will put the invoice for the other nodes to uh, to pay to pay the routing fee that the node has paid. Oh, so it so it needs to be managed sort of internally. You mean like like who who carry the costs or something? Yeah. Yes. So uh, let me show you here. I think I have the. So here is the screenshot of, uh, so I have, I have been basically joining a, a swap. I don't know if I was A or B or whatever. So once the swap is completed, so this platform is only for like communicating, uh, communication among the nodes. You will see the address of the node that you have to open the, the channel to. You just copy this and then you go back to your, uh, lightning uh, node, you go back to RTL or Thunder Hub. I will show you how to open a channel afterwards. And then you open your channel from your own node. And then once you open a channel, you come back to, to uh, LN Plus, to the swap, and then you click on channel opening started. So you are signing to the other nodes that you have already uh, opened the channel. And then if the neighboring node has received the channel, he can confirm that he received it and he can give you a positive feedback. If, he give, if, he, if you're lying, you will get a negative feedback and it will affect your profile and then no one wants to open a channel with you. So you don't have to do much technical stuff in here. This is only for creating like a contract among the nodes saying that, okay, we agree that we are four nodes that have joined this 2 million Satoshi swap. We agree that we open channel with each other. I am A and you are B. I, I agree that I will open a channel to you and D will open a channel to A and C to, to D. And as you can see in the picture. And then afterwards, if you decide, you can rebalance the channels in order that all the channels will have equal capacity on both sides and inbound and outbound. And to do so, only one node has to be volunteer to do it. Because let's say I am node A and I have a channel going towards B with a capacity of 2 million Satoshis. And D has already opened the 2 million Satoshis to me. And the way that rebalancing works, I pay half of that channel. Let's say I want to pay 1 million Satoshis and I want to receive it on this channel, the channel that is coming from D. So it has to go through all of them. It has to go through B, C, and D, and then I will get it back on this channel. So this channel that I have, it will get to half, 
my outbound liquidity will cut to 1 million. And then the, the, the other 1 million will be received on the other channel. But I have to pay the routing fee to B, C, and D, the routing fee that they set on their channel, which I will show you how to, to define a routing fee later on. But then in the Lightning Network Plus, you can communicate with, with each other. Either you agree that everyone set their fees to zero temporarily, but some people, I mean, I also don't really want to do it because sometimes if you set it to zero, your channel might get drained. You might route some transaction right away and then your channel, then you cannot do the rebalancing because like you might have, uh, you, that specific channel might be part of one of the routings for another transaction. But then you can say, all right, just node B is, uh, he's gonna be the volunteer to do the rebalancing. I'm saying, okay, you just do the rebalancing. Whatever, whatever fee you are paying to my node, just send me the invoice, I will pay you back. So it's just a way of communicating. Gotcha, but, but it's sort of the advantage versus, you know, doing it in, uh, you know, within the whatever, Thunderhop or RTL, like, is it more like automated and more by default, the, the some processes like so you, yeah. uh, so as i said here is just the the platform to uh so you cannot open channels in here you cannot do the rebalancing in here this is only to to make a contract among each other right. to uh, to agree that all these four nodes going to open a 2 million satoshi channel to each other you still have to go back to your own lightning node and do all this stuff but as we said earlier this is a really good and easy way to, to get inbound liquidity because you are not paying for it. You are not, uh, otherwise you have to convince someone to open the channel with you. And uh, you either have to buy it from Bitrefill or you have to pay services, uh, you have to pay to loop services, do loop out, but then you, uh, it costs you some, some sets. Uh, but this is really an easy way. And at the same time, when you think about it, so once you, you complete this swap and you are sure that B, you are A and you're sure that B has already a channel with C, C has to D, D has to A, and you already have indirect channel with all these other nodes. And all these other nodes, they are in other swaps. So you already have indirect channels with all the other swaps. So that's another point of it. So uh, yeah, it is like, yeah, these swaps are already like a node and you, you, you all get inter, interconnected to each other. So, uh, yeah, that's about uh, Lightning uh, liquidity swap using Lightning Network Plus. I'd really, really urge everyone to just go ahead and sign up there. Really easy. You can even then sign in with your, <laughs> with like signing uh, with your Lightning uh, just signing a lightning uh, signature and then yeah just create an uh, create an account verify your lightning uh, just claim your lightning node you have to just claim it and uh, yeah searching for swaps you can search for swaps so for 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 the at the moment for instance there are yeah, there are plenty. You can either uh, even uh, select the shape, but let's say how many open for application do we have? So we have seven at the moment. Some of them, they have restrictions. So for instance, in this one, you need to have at least 30 open channels with a minimum of 30 million Satoshi's capacity on your node. Otherwise you won't be able to, to join in this swap. But in some cases, or even you can start your own swap. Once you register, you can create your own uh, little triangle swap with, let's say, yeah, 500,000 Satoshis without any restrictions. So then it will get filled really fast. And then you follow the procedure there. Really easy. All right. So let's move to uh, how to open a channel. Uh, so yeah, let's say now you have uh, finalized the swap. You see the lightning, uh, the lightning uh, address of the node that you have to open the channel to. Uh, in RTL, first you need to add the peer, uh, which basically you have to go in the panel in the lightning section, peer and channels. You go under peer section, and then you add peer. 
you simply copy the the, the address that you either uh, got it in in your in the in the swap or from one ml or ambush or whatever you just copy it and your peer gets added and then on the second page basically you will have an option to basically you just put in the the uh, the capacity of the channel how much uh, the, uh, how how big the channel do you want to be and uh, you you can choose the transaction fee so in this case as I said I always try to to do it when it is not when the mempool is not crowded just put one satoshi per value byte private channel uh, so this is in a case that if you want to open a channel with a node that won't be really uh, engaged in routings. But uh, yeah, I don't really use it, but in case if you want, if you, you, you want to have a private connection with a specific node that you're gonna have uh, transactions going back and forth, you can just uh, activate private channel and then your channel will be private. But then yeah, there won't be routings on that channel going through and uh, it won't be broadcasted to the network. And I mean, you cannot even see it on the, uh, on one ML or Ambush, you cannot see that there is such a channel on your node. And for instance, in the case of liquidity swap, you shouldn't really create private channel because other nodes won't see your channel and you cannot, so they don't see a connection in the swap. Your, your swap won't be connected. It won't be a complete swap. Uh, spend unconfirmed output. This is in a case that let's say you have already uh, funded your on-chain wallet and uh, your transaction is still not, not confirmed, but you, you can already open a channel using this function. Uh, this is somehow like the feature of child pay for parent. So what, what's it called? CPFP? Yeah, I think so. So it broadcasts an additional transaction on top of that unconfirmed uh, UTXO and uh, confirm both of them at the same time. So this is in a case that you, you are in a rush, like you already have funded your on-chain wallet, but it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, but isn't that the RBF? Like, like what do you call it? Yeah, RBF is different, Re uh, replaced by fee. Replaced yeah. by fee, you basically you raise the fee of the the existing transaction but in this case you create an additional transaction out of the utxo that is not confirmed and you create a higher fee on that as well all right gotcha. and that transaction will, will be the transaction for creating that channel the initial transaction is the transaction coming uh, to your lightning on-chain wallet and the second transaction is the transaction for creating the, the lightning channel. That was RTL in Thunderhub. Uh, the principle is the same, it's just different user interface. Uh, so you go under channels. If the, the peer is new, you just click yes. If it is not new, if it is already part of your peer list, you just uh, select the peer. But in this case, we say it's a new peer. You just copy paste the same public key, the channel size, as I said, you just type in the capacity of your channel, push tokens to the partner. You don't want to do it. I mean, that means that like you are paying, you're paying uh, that, that capacity, that liquidity will be pushed forward to the other uh, node. It will be their outbound liquidity or their local balance. Type public, private, we already covered what private mean. Uh, and fee again, just type in manually one Satoshi per value byte. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna touch the rebalancing. Rebalancing itself, it's a huge, huge topic. Uh, like it works to uh, mention, I mean, in some cases, does it really, uh, does it worth to do the rebalancing or not? Because there are many different parameters uh, involving there. Like some channels, they might be, uh, you might be routing a lot of liquidity on some channels that you are earning some routing fees on, on, on them. But then at some point when they are, uh, basically when they're drained, you don't have any local or outbound liquidity on those channels. 
but then you have some channels which you have a lot of outbound liquidity, but you are not really using them for routing. You can rebalance those channels or send some outbound liquidity from uh, one specific channel. So for example, in this case, you see that these channels that I have, that I basically am showing, these are not balanced at all. So the ones with the dark uh, green, is it green or blue? Yeah, with the dark darker color, they are the ones that all the the capacity are on my side. They are outbound liquidity, and there is one here with the light blue. The whole capacity is on the peer side. It, the, the whole capacity is outbound liquidity for me. Uh, sorry, inbound liquidity for me. Uh, so you can do the rebalancing from the the action uh, drop down. Click on circular rebalance. It will ask you how much do you want to rebalance and then from which peer you want to receive it from. But this will not <laughs> always work because you, it has to find a routing, uh, the routing path. And uh, you have to define what is the maximum fee that you want to pay for the routing. Because in some cases, it, you might have to end up paying a lot of routing fee that it might not really worth to do the rebalancing. So that's why it's a really huge topic. There are, I know like there are, uh, some applications, uh, I, I haven't really worked with it, but I have been reading, like, I think it's LND Manage that somehow sorts your channels based on how much rat routing you're doing, like on specific channels. And does it worth to do the rebalancing? It will show you, like, how much does it cost you to do the rebalancing? But that is a really, like, uh, a, a much more technical topic. I don't want to like, uh, go through it. But just to... Uh, to tell you like what does circular rebalancing actually mean. So it means you send some of the capacity on the channel that you have as an outbound liquidity that you have and you receive it on, on another channel. But you need to have enough receiving capacity on the other channel and you have to cover the cost. You have to cover the routing cost because it, it, it might it might end up going through different peers until it reaches that specific channel. And you have to cover all those routing fees that are defined by the other nodes. Can you predict the cost already? Do you see that once you go on, I don't know, like once you initiate the this process, I mean, or or do you know that, do you, do you, you know, will you know that like afterwards, like when you say, you know, carry it, you have to pay the cost. Do you know that in advance once? Uh, before there you... is in in RTL it will show you an estimation of fee, but it's totally crap. It it just takes the fee of oh. the first the first routing peer, uh -huh. the, the the first node. But there is actually there is this website which I really like it. It's called LN uh, LN Node Insights. Mm -hmm. You can do some analysis here, but there is a rebalance simulator that you can choose like from which peer to which peer you want to rebalance. And, uh, but I guess you have to, yeah, you have to pay like 200 Satoshi's invoice and it will show you. It I is see. still, okay. I've been actually asking them if there is, because I really like the way that they are doing the, like you can build your own chart. You can do some rough analysis here. They still don't have like a uh, uh, fixed, period uh, subscription, you know, they have like, you have to pay 200 Satoshi invoice for one uh, one analysis for one, you know, yeah. but maybe I, at I, some I, point it was saying, maybe they will come up with like a pre prepaid half a year, one year plan. But as for now, I still don't know any other way to, to figure out, to figure out how much it costs. Okay. Because, and it depends, does it depend on the mem mempool, right? Too? I mean, is that no. Only? No, it it no. doesn't have anything to do okay. with mempool. Gotcha. This is uh, only dependent on th the fee that the, all the individual pe peers, or not the, not the peers, oh, all course. the individual yeah, nodes. It's, it's not on chain, right? No, no, it is the based on the fee. I, I will cover what uh, what kind yeah, of fee sure. we have. We have two type of fees, but it depends on how much fee the the peer that your that your payment is going through. Uh, has to pay to the peer, uh, to the node. So some of the nodes might have a higher higher fee, even though the the network tries to find out the cheapest possible way. But in some cases, some of the peers 
some of the nodes might have defined uh, a higher fee. And in order to reach that specific receiving channel, it has only one chance to go through that peer, to go through that node. I keep saying peer. It might not be your peer, but there is another node. And uh, yeah, basically it is only the, the routing fee that you have to cover on the second layer. But there is also a way to do it from the, the terminal of your node. But again, like once you do it, you can even define from which hops you, you want the, uh, the payment to go through. But we just do it right away. I was actually expecting to show an estimation of fee and then ask me to confirm, but it doesn't. We just do it and then it will show you it has deducted like, I don't know, like 2,000 Satoshis. But maybe there is another way. I still don't know. Maybe someone knows, can comment. But uh, yeah, Ellen, ellennodeinsight.com. This is one of the ways I know, but you have to pay 200 Satoshis. And now we get to backup section, which is very important. So as you remember, I mentioned earlier, when you had to write down your seed, you need a static channel backup in order to recover your funds, your off-chain funds, the funds on your uh, open channels. A static channel backup or SCB uh, basically sends the funds to your on-chain wallet. Once you want to recover your node, it will close all the channels and recover them uh, on your on-chain wallet. And it's very, very imp important and crucial that you have to download your SCB recovery backup whenever there is a new open channel or whenever there is any channel being closed. Otherwise, you might face some difficulties. I didn't have any issues so far, but I know that this is very crucial. You always have to make sure you, you have the latest static channel backup uh, showing the, the, the status of your channels. So th these are the manual ways. I will show you the, the coolest version that you can have it later on in the Telegram API section. But this is the manual way that you can download it. Uh, so from RTL at the top left side, you can see on the panel, you go, uh, you go in the backup section, backup all and you download backup. It will, just, it will be a very small uh, TXT file. Uh, for the MyNode users on your uh, dashboard, your Lightning Status dashboard, uh, you also have a direct button for, for, creating, uh, for basically downloading the channel backup. And for Thunderhub, you can get it under tools, back up all channels and you download it. So that's very important to keep in mind. Uh, yeah, I'm going to explain briefly about the routing fees. We talked about it a bit, but it's important to know there are two types of fees uh, that are basically considered in the, the Lightning Network. Base fee, base fee is the, the basic fee that you have to pay for every individual transaction, uh, regardless of the, the capacity, regardless of the volume of the transaction that is considered as base fee. And normally the, the fees in Lightning Network are in the unit of milli Satoshi. So one Satoshi is basically 1000 milli Satoshis. But base fee, uh, basically there has been a campaign a few months ago that... Uh, uh, encourages all the, the, the nodes to drop their base fee to zero. I personally put all my base fee to zero because, yeah, otherwise you won't get any routing <laughs> at all. But in some cases, it, if it bothers you, if, if you find out, I mean, it hasn't been such a case for me for a long time. Sometimes I see that there are very small transactions going through. If it bothers you, if it uh, happens so often, you can just... I define a little bit of base fee, then you won't be routing those small transactions. So base fee is the in, uh, basically fee per transaction, regardless of the, the volume of the transaction. PPM uh, is the percentage of the transaction volume. In other, uh, in other words, basically it means one Satoshi per million Satoshi, or you can say, uh, one milli Satoshi per thousand Satoshi. It's the same. It's the same principle. One Satoshi per million or uh, one milli Satoshi per uh, 1,000. As an example, let's say uh, you have routed a transaction 
with a volume of 10,000 Satoshis and you have defined 100 PPM for that channel. So the, the, your base fee is zero. Let's say your base fee is zero, but your PPM, you have defined 100 PPM. So 100 PPM, which means you get 100 Satoshis per million sets. But in this case, there is 10,000 Satoshis going through which means you earn 0.01% uh, transaction fee, which is equal to 1,000 uh, 1, Satoshi, 1,000 milli Satoshi or one, one Satoshi. So PPM, it just you can say yeah, parts per million, one Satoshi per million. And depending if the, the, the capacity or if the transaction volume is uh, bigger, Basically, the percentage-wise is the same, but you earn more. So that's about the, the, the terminology of routing fees and how to actually update your fees and uh, define fees on your channels. Uh, so first, I will show you on RTL. So uh, on the section of Lightning section, under your peers and channels, you have the list of all of your channels uh, from the action dropdown. You cl click on update fee policy and it will show you uh, the base fee, as I said, in milli Satoshis. I usually, I always define it as zero and your PPM fee rate. Uh, it is shown as milli MSAT. Oh, you have the percentage uh, below, but this is actually PPM. So 100 PPM is 0.01%. And if you want to do it uh, for all of the channels, you can do it from the, the action drop down at the top of the panel. It will show you the update fee policy for all the channels and you, will, you can define a single PPM or single base fee, which will be applied to all of your open channels. And for Thunderhub, again, you go under channel section and uh, you, you click on the channel that you want. You're like, I, have, I had to hide some stuff, but click on the channel, you click on update detail. And uh, again, you, you can define your base fee and the fee rate. And again, you have the option to do it for all the channels. You can, uh, from the channel section again, you click on the gear icon, change channel detail, you click on ch change, and then it will show you the, the window that you can define the fee for all the channels and it will implement on all the open channels. There is another cool feature in the in Thunder Hub that you can have a view, like a quick view of all your uh, fees from your side and your peer side. This is something you cannot really see on uh, RTL. You have to individually click on channels and view the fees or view remote fees. But in Thunder Hub, you can go uh, in the stats section. My fee status, if you click on it, it it will show you all the channels uh, and all the fees, the base fee and PPM. And you can have a, a quick glance on the fees from your side. And you can also see the, the fees that have been defined from your peer side. And on Zeus Wallet, just quickly, if you have uh, paired up your Zeus app with your, uh, with your node, uh, you can go under channel section at the bottom right corner select the channel that you want really easy then click on set new fees type in the the fees and submit it so Kevin, do you have any question or yeah uh, maybe i had some question about the ppm or or how do you set like how, how do you on what basis again do you do you decide like mm. what, what what should be the like uh, you know the routing fees or the you know like setting the fees that's a really good question. Uh, so something to mention, you have to be, if you want to earn some routing fees and if you want to uh, basically uh, have a bit uh, of an adventure to like to see like uh, the routing is going through your node because it's, it's really interesting. Uh, I would always suggest to start from setting really low fees. Basically keep it zero. PPM maybe start from these days, I would say start from 20 or even like 50 maximum. Even 20 would be better. And then keep monitoring because there are a lot of variables, like how many open channels you have to what nodes and how much liquidity you actually have as a 
outbound liquidity and then keep monitoring, keep monitoring which nodes are doing the most routing and then start like, you have to be a bit dynamic. Start like raising it a bit until like you find a really sweet spot. Maybe some of your channels, you don't really want them to get drained. Raise the fee on those ones. So there won't be much routing going through them. But if uh, other, uh, other way around, if there are some of the channels that you want to really get some routing through them, uh, lower the fee, but on a range that's basically, uh, yeah, it won't drain your channel. Uh, but yeah, you have to be a bit dynamic. I would say start slowly with 20 ppm, 50 ppm, monitor them. Some of the, the channels might uh, basically behave differently. And then you can raise it over time. But at some point, if you raise it a lot, then you won't get any routing. Gotcha, thanks. All right. Great. Then uh, we get to the watchtower section. So what, basically to, to explain what are watchtowers, watchtowers are actually other nodes that basically keep monitoring your node while you are offline. And they try to secure your open channels while you are offline. Because uh, in case that uh, your peer tries to close the channel during your offline time, uh, if the peer tries to, to close the channel, in an outdated form, uh, they can do it if, the, if you don't have a watchtower and you will lose your fund. But if you have a watchtower, basically they are uh, watching your node on behalf of yours. And if the, if the other peer tries to, to close the channel in an outdated state, they get punished and you, you gain all the funds of that channel to, to, to your uh, on-chain wallet and the other peer will basically lose all of their funds on the channel. Uh, they, the watchtowers do not store transactions directly. I mean, not to get uh, into all the details because I'm also, I mean, I'm not a, a coder, but I know that the, that the watchtowers do not store the transactions directly. They just have an encrypted versions of the transactions and they cannot really control your node. And uh, as I said earlier, so in case of malicious attack by the peer node, Watchtower send a punishing transaction on your node's behalf, and they will take all the funds of the attacker on the channel and sending them all to your node's on-chain wallet. It is very important to use multiple Watchtowers and do not depend on single one because they might uh, go offline. So. It's better to have more than one, but this is something you have to define manually. Uh, yeah, once you set up your node, the, the, you won't have any watchtower by default. You have to set it up manually. So uh, let's take a concrete example with my node. I mean, there's only if you open up, you know, that you had that displayed already on your screenshot. Um, there's only one button, right, with watchtower. So what do you mean by multiple watchtowers? Is it did you, is that like with command lines or... <laughs> Yes, so uh, you mean this button, right? For example, yeah. yeah. So this button, it, this will activate your node's watchtower as basically, because your node can be a watchtower uh, of my node, you know? And if you activate this, it will show you your watchtower URL and I can, uh, I can use your, uh, I can be your client. I can, you, you pass me, uh, you pass me the your watchtower server URL, pass it over to me, and I can become your uh, client. So by activating this, it doesn't mean that you will you will be having watchtowers monitoring your node. It means that now you have a public watchtower uh, URL that you can pass it around to to other nodes, uh, and other no nodes will be your client. So that is the address that is shown down here. So this is your watchtower. URL. Uh, yes, and you can also do it in the terminal. You type in LNCLI tower info. Let me, uh, I hope you know where to find the terminal. I forgot to put the screenshot. Uh, but basically, if you go in the settings section, 
Yeah, and then there's, uh, I mean, in my node, I know it's, I just go into, you know, Linux terminal. Yes, exactly. In and Linux that's terminal. In where, I mean, the best, you know, uh, in, in Tor, of course, in Tor browser, and it opens up a fresh, you know, window on Tor browser. And exactly. this is where you put in, or this is, I usually have to unlock manual every time after every reboot, the, the lightning, uh, net, you know. Yes. Okay. And then you unlock and, you know, and then. Yeah, so you open your Linux terminal and you type in LNCLI Tower Info, you will see the same information. So uh, these are some links that maybe you can put in the show notes afterwards that you can find uh, altruistic or friendly watchtowers that uh, basically you can add their public watchtower address and become their client. You don't have to pay anything for that. It is just from a specific version of LND. I, I don't remember which version, but watchtowers are basically altruistic. So you don't have to pay because at some point, I guess if the watchtower was catching some kind of an outdated transaction, they were getting a portion of that, but now it's free. And you just have to add the watchtower address to become their client, which I will show you how to do it. So in your terminal, you have to use this command, lncli wt client add, and then you just copy and paste the, the public uh, watchtower address of that specific node. And uh, yeah, make sure it is basically you can use the, the Tor addresses. And then you should see this response, the blank response. That means basically you have already uh, become a client of that watchtower. And if you want to see the all your active, basically, watchtowers, just type in this command, lncli wt client towers with S at the end, and you see all your watchtowers, but make sure, I mean, if you see the, the active, active session candidate is saying true, that means your watchtower is online. That was, uh, that's why I mentioned, make sure you to have multiple watchtowers. So you see in this screenshot, only one of those rush towers are online. So that's about watch towers. And then we move to balance of Satoshis, the application that basically it allows you to interact with your lightning network through CLI uh, with your lightning node. And it has basically, you can see all the features all the commands that you can use, but the unique feature that I love the most and it is really famous for is the Telegram API connection. So you can basically pair your uh, Lightning node with your Telegram and you receive push notification whenever you receive a payment or basically whenever there is a routing going through your node. Uh, if someone opens a channel with you, you get auto static channel backup recovery, which is very, very crucial. And that really makes your life much easier because you always have the, the, the latest uh, backup file on your, on your phone, basically on your Telegram account. Uh, you can basically create earning reports. You can also even create invoices from, from your, your Telegram. But the good point is that you cannot actually make any payments, which is a really good feature. So if someone uses your Telegram, they cannot pay. You cannot make any payments from your API. So we'll go through the installation. So again, you open your Linux terminal. Uh, by default, it your MyNote, you can install it from your uh, application manager. But uh, yeah, and by default should be installed. But if you want to install it from your terminal, you can use this command using npm con command. If you get an error, use sudo, sudo npm command, and then you should be good to go. It should work. And then uh, basically to, uh, to confirm and approve the installation, basically just type in boss help. Then you should see the version and you see the, all, all the commands. Basically by this point, you're, <clears throat> you can verify that the installation has been successful. And uh, yeah, to uh, run the Telegram command, type in boss Telegram. Now it will activate. Uh, yeah, but before that, if you get any kind of error, 
by typing this, by typing bus telegram. And if you make sure that the, the uh, that bus is already installed, uh, that means you need to update your JavaScript on your node. And it's really simple to do so. You can either follow this, you can follow this website as well, just four commands you have to do in order. And you will install the latest JavaScript on your, uh, on your node. That is in case if you get any kind of error by running this command. But let's say you have uh, updated your JavaScript, no error. So uh, before that, yeah, let's make sure your bus telegram has been working and keep that aside. On your telegram, open your telegram and search at bot father in your in telegram and message new bot slash new bot and then it will ask you to uh, choose a name for it choose a username and uh, yeah then it will show you uh, a message with a string of http api this is this should be uh, kept secure this is very important and you also have a link it will create a bot for you with the name that you have defined and it has a link to the bot so just click on the link on the link it will open up the the bot that you have created and from this page copy the http api and go back in your terminal that you have already you have the bus telegram command activated it is asking you to paste the the telegram api paste it here and then uh, then it will ask you for a connection code so now you go back to the bot that it has created for you, find the bot in Telegram, message connect in the bot, start message connect. It will show you a connection code. And then copy that connection code, paste it here, and then you should receive the connection is true. That means basically the connection has been successful. Yeah, paste in terminal, that's what I said. But uh, yeah, at this point, it's still very important. You shouldn't close terminal because if you close terminal, uh, the connection get disrupted and you have to do everything from scratch. Uh, now we have to uh, basically make sure that we define a command that it will keep the telegram, the boss telegram command always running in background. So in order to do so, click uh, basically, yeah, click Control plus C to go back to be able to type in. And then you have to type in this command. You have to make sure you use your connection code that you received from your Telegram bot. Uh, you replace it here. So bus Telegram connect your connection code and the, the rest of the string. Then you should receive a message like a number in a bracket. And then again, don't exit it by clicking on the X icon. You have to manually type in exit and then you log out. Then it will log out. Then by this, uh, by doing this step, you are sure that the command is running on the background. By closing the terminal, everything is still running. And yes, congratulations. Now you can communicate with your node using Telegram, which is really cool. You can type in, you, you will see all the, the commands. You see the backup command. Uh, you type in backup command, it will send you the SCB file. Uh, even when you close the channel, when someone opens the channel, it will send you SCB file uh, uh, automatically. It will show you the, the pending channels, show you the pending transactions, and uh, yeah, all the, the notification and stuff. So that's about BOSS Telegram API. Last but not least, I will quickly cover Loop services. So Loop is basically uh, a service which is offered by Lightning Labs and it's uh, like a bridge between on-chain and off-chain uh, off network. And by using Loop, as, a, as we talked about receiving liquidity, Loop will allow you to receive either inbound or outbound liquidity outbound uh, capacity but on the existing channel that you you already have 
but for, for, for doing that, there is a minimum and maximum capacity that uh, you can either loop in or loop out, which I believe it is roughly from 250,000 Satoshis to 6 million Satoshis. And uh, you also have to, uh, to cover the fees. So the fees, apart from the routing fee that you have to pay, you have to pay for the on-chain fee, which is uh, the, the, the fee that your transaction should get confirmed on-chain. And you, you have to pay a, a service fee to loop, which is uh, something around 0.1 to 1%. This is uh, basically depending on the, the amount, the volume that you want to loop in or loop out. The more you do, the lower the service fee, but in general, it is uh, a bit high. And even the on-chain fees, even if you try it during the time that the mempool is not crowded because you cannot uh, type in manually the fee that you want, you can just type in the, the, the confirmation target block, but they usually overpay. They, over, they overpay the on-chain fee. So, so just to, is it better to do this on weekends, right? When the mempool is more cleared, like, or, or doesn't it, or it doesn't matter? Yeah, it is better, but in general, what I have experienced, they still, uh, they, they charge you much more. They will, they, uh, even if you say, even if you say like, there is only one block waiting for confirmation and you define a uh, six confirmation block when you want to loop out they overpay your transaction by six or 10 times. So you can't get a confirmation by like, let's say one or two Satoshi per value byte, but then they pay it with like 20 Satoshi per value byte. But <clears throat> the loop service, I wouldn't really recommending to recommending using it to, uh, to have uh, capacity on your channels, uh, but it is only recommended in case that let's say you really want to to get your funds from uh, back to the on chain from off chain off of the off chain and back to the on chain and by doing so let's say you have a 1 million satoshi channel open i have a 1 million satoshi channel open with uk1 which all the fund is at my side as an outbound liquidity and then uh, let's say i can loop out half of it i loop out 500 satoshi 500000 satoshis which means I send it off chain on Lightning to loop, and they send me an off. Uh, they send me an on chain transaction back to my my on chain wallet. But uh, they deduct the fee, so I don't get five hundred thousand satoshis. I might end up getting four hundred ninety thousand satoshis. Uh, you have to pay the the on chain fee. You have to pay the routing fee in case if there is like from your node uh, to 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 loop. Uh, note to uh, the, the the fee that you you have to cover for the routing to reach their node. That is the that's what I call here routing fees. I have to cover the routing fee as well, the on-chain fee as uh, I explained, as well as the service fee. So that is loop out. The loop in is similar principle, but other way around. Let's say I have a channel with you. 500,000 Satoshi on my side, 500,000 Satoshi on, uh, on your, your side, your side and my side. And I can loop in from the channel that I have with you, but I have a maximum threshold of half a million Satoshis that I can receive from your channel. So I loop in, I receive it on our channel from the capacity that I have opened from you. I cannot exceed 500,000 Satoshis because I cannot receive more than 500,000 Satoshis. Then I loop in basically, then that, that much that I loop in, I can, I'm able to spend it, use it and spend it. But again, for looping, again, I have to cover all these fees, the routing, on-chain and service fee. Great, yeah, it's a lot of technical. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, I mean, it's, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna definitely, um, either you or me, you know, or, or you can, I don't know, do you have your, this PDF, uh, the slideshow is a PDF on your drive, on your Google Drive, or well, I can put it on my Google Drive and then sort of make it publicly. Yes, absolutely. So people yeah. can just, you know, go directly into the PDF and if they, you know, need to follow instructions, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah, I will send it to you afterwards sure I so think here, I have the I think I have the PDF but I'm not sure whether I have the latest version no I think I made some changes I will send you the latest one uh, 
so here are just some screenshots how you can use loop. So you can either do it from Lightning Terminal, which from my, for my node users, you can access it from your dashboard again. You just uh, you have the password, you open it, it will open this page. You can select the channel. It will actually uh, recommend you if you, you can do the loop out or loop in. Obviously, if you have more of the, the Satoshi's, more of the capacity on your side, on, the, on your local balance, you can do loop out and vice versa. You can do loop in. Uh, you can also do it from RTL. They have it as an integrated service. Uh, yes, if it's integrated from there, you can do it on individual channels from action dropdown, loop out, or you can easily go in the, in the loop section and do the, the loop in or loop out. And this is what you will see. You, you define the amount. Uh, you define the confirmation target, but as I have tried it, that won't you you will end up paying more for the unchained fee. Even if you define six and mempool is not crowded, uh, then you will check the transaction. They overpaid it by ten or fifteen times. And maximum off chain routing fee that you're willing to pay. Of course, if uh, if it exceeds, then uh, basically your transaction will get failed, and you you won't be able to do loop out. You have to make sure you cover the, the, the routing fees. And you can also do it from the terminal. If you're a bit more sophisticated from your terminal, you just type in loop, you will see all the commands. You can easily do loop in, loop out, define the, uh, the amount and the, the, the channel. From Thunderhub, you can also do it, but this is another service covered. Uh, basically, uh, it's offer, offered by Bolt, which is called Swap. But it's the same principle, but here you also see the fee, the minimum and maximum that you can do. That was pretty much it, I guess. That was amazing. Thanks, man. That was amazing. Thank you. Uh, so Armand, I mean, we probably have to talk or I have to ask maybe a developer or somebody, you know, uh, in, in the technical field. Do you think some of the steps could be even more simplified for beginners or, you know, being by default more automated or, you know, just taking off the, also the risk is, you think, the, in the process? I, yeah, I, I get your point. I think it is definitely it's moving towards the the point that it will get more user-friendly, for example. I mean, look at the, the Telegram API, for instance. I know it is still a bit, it uh, requires some effort to make the connection, but then once you have it, then for instance, you have, uh, you have a, a simple connection to your node, to your lightning node. You can communicate with it wherever you are, whenever you, uh, you want and you get your uh, channel backup on regular basis. So there is no risk of losing your fund, even if your node crashes and whatever happens. But definitely, I mean, I know like there are a lot of developers, of course, they are putting all their efforts to, to it. I mean, yeah. just, you know, um, I'm not saying it's, it's like, it, it, it's, I mean, just following instructions should be easy and simple, for, you know, um, for even for the average user. I'm just saying um, it takes probably someone who's really like busy and stressed out and, you know, has a lot of things to do, like, you know, job, family. <laughs> um, it might be a little bit too burdensome, like to mm. you know, constantly watch and see everything is okay and, you know, rebalance and uh, it, I'm not sure. I mean, if people want to learn, they learn, you know, they educate themselves, they, they get, you know, they're self-empowered and, and it's all a matter, you know, of willingness and in, tension behind it yeah absolutely but i mean as i said in the beginning of the show you, you have the option to do it mm -hmm. and if you really want to to see how it works you have to do it mm -hmm. and uh, you have to get your hands dirty and you see that the routings you see like how to how changing your your channel fee will affect the routings but if you're if you don't really want to bother you can you have the option to just uh, download the phoenix wallet and uh yeah but i wouldn't put that much liquidity on phoenix exactly, that yeah. i put on my own note yeah because i don't i want to contribute more yeah. and i feel safer doing it with my own note yeah and at the end of the day you know it's about uh, being self-sovereign and exactly uh you know not your keys not your coin don't trust verify and 
and just learning the steps in between uh, and then you have the, like the full certainty the total certainty that you know everything is every step you take is like self-verified and yes. self-confirmed you know and self-sovereign and i think this is this is the ultimate goal uh, for for all of us right mm. how many channels are, i mean how many is there um, i heard first of all in germany there's the highest number of 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 nodes and channels or, or or am i mixing something up I'm no i think i think you're right i think germany has been really spiking <laughs> yeah i mean you can even uh, on lightning network plus you can track how many new users are adding and they are registering with the uh with lightning network plus so in a month time from like uh, mid-september until today the almost 1000 new users <laughs> wow and how many bitcoin like uh i think 3000 4000 bitcoin are locked in lightning is that uh, total However, network capacity is yes 3110 wow. bitcoin yeah and it's going to grow exponentially we, we absolutely see, uh, absolutely an s curve i think on absolutely. every level i think <laughs> it has never been so bullish no <laughs> on no, every I mean, level you know not only you know it's not about the number go up but, you know i mean i'm sick and tired of this i think hopefully we're gonna just just usher into the purchasing power mindset you know absolutely you know, fuck I, all that fiat denominated bullshit i mean we're talking about like absolute scarcity and in accordance and in conformity with the absolute scarcity of bitcoin then we know the real purchasing power of every single set you know once we, we reach parity absolutely i even forget parity i mean parity means you know one set means one cent right mm. Or one set, what means whatever. <laughs> so, um, no, it was was really yeah mind blowing. Uh, Armin, any other final, you know, want any other information resources links? Uh, I'm gonna put up the PDF file um, as a yeah. you know, public accessible link. Yes, let's provide that PDF file. Uh, yeah, I will try to somehow try to help the, the Farsi community. I mean, there are a lot of brilliant people like Zia, a lot of uh, people that you know. Uh, but yeah, trying to somehow uh, uh, instruct as much as I can. Uh, yeah, put this stuff in Farsi as well. But uh, yeah, just run your node. I mean, for me personally, for example, if whenever I want to buy something, if there is an option to pay with Lightning, I just pay with Lightning because mm -hmm. I know that I'm DCAing and uh, do my payment in Lightning and the merchant ha has the option to, to keep it. Mm -hmm. as, uh, and once it really catches on, no one, can, no one really uh, has to uh, deal with the, the unchain, unchain transactions. That's, that's another point that I believe that it's really good that we have the chance at the moment to open our channels, to, to, to learn some mm -hmm. stuff and be prepared. Because at some point, it will be costing <laughs> some hard-earned sets to open yeah, a channel. Exactly. No, I think it's it's going to become it's going to become simplified, more simplified, uh, more accessible, more... I mean, just the whole the whole process of of Bitcoin transactions and creating a wallet. I mean, it's gotten even you know a lot of you know OGs or technical people from who were from who were who were there from the beginning. They all say you know it's it's like totally different, and it has evolved exponentially. You know, whether it's you know your own security or uh, creating Bitcoin wallet or cold storage. Uh, mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, the whole lightning package, it's going to become easier. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Where can people find you? Any other uh, links or uh, plugins? Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm in uh, LinkedIn as my full name, Arman Tolle, and uh, Twitter, sometimes shit posting, Arman Ellen Hoddle. And yeah, that's it. Super. Well, man, catch you soon. Hope we're gonna do another episode. Uh, hopefully, you know, maybe with some other, you know, Bitcoiners or some Persian people, <laughs> Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoinism from Iran, or you know, I think it's important that we pick up the people where they are positioned right now and uh, inspire also other people who are not 
into Bitcoin yet, but at least give them the inspiration and the the power, the tools of empowerment. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, Amran, thank you so much. I'll thank you. you okay. Thanks, Kevin. All right. Have a good evening.